Hi there, in this video we're going to take a look at how easy it is to transpose audio. Transposing audio means changing the key or making it higher or lower. Now doors like Cubase come with a lot of audio content in the form of samples and these samples will often show you the tempo, so how fast it is, and a key marking so we know what key the samples are in, which is important if we're going to try and merge or blend samples together into a music production. In Cubase, we can find samples and access them through the media bay. And in this case, I'm actually looking at my own samples that I have in an external folder. If these two buttons here are activated, I can play a sample in the same tempo as my project, meaning I can integrate it into my production easily. The media bay also has a favorites folder and this is where I can store all my favorite samples. And once again, I can preview them and they're in the same tempo as my project. So they're automatically time stretched, which really saves us a whole lot of time. If I change the tempo down here, these samples are going to play in the tempo of my project. So that's the tempo taken care of. As soon as we drag and drop one of these files over into a blank area in the project window, it's inserted the sample with the correct tempo and I can give the track a color if I want. In the top left-hand corner of the event, we can see the name which has that information about the tempo and the key. And if we click on the event, we can also see information along this strip here. And I can see that the key of this sample is B flat. We don't need to worry about the tempo because I can see that Cubase has read that tempo marking in the name and it's locked onto 16 bars, which is the length of the sample. And when I change the tempo, it's still locked in to 16 bars. Now, if it wasn't locked in to that tempo, then I'd know that there were tempo issues. With my event selected up the top here, I can see global transpose and I've got two options, follow or independent. When it's following the global tempo, it's going to follow whatever key or root key I specify for this project, providing I tell Cubase what key the sample's in. And I've just selected A sharp, which is exactly the same note as B flat on a piano keyboard. If you can't see the project root key drop down menu here, then right mouse click on this area and make sure it's ticked. And now you can see it. And I can go to this drop down menu now and say, hey, my root key of the whole entire project is going to be A sharp, which is of course B flat. And now it's playing in the original key. But if I want to change the key, then anything that's set to follow my project root key in that global transpose will automatically transpose. So if everything in my project is set to follow this, I can instantly change the key of my project. And we're going to take a look at that in more detail. This transpose number's changing every time I change the key. So it's taking the guesswork out of it for me. So just make sure global transpose is set to follow. Now let's go and have a look for another sample. So this is fairly simple and I'm just going to drag and drop it straight over. Now let's see if this sample is going to sound any good when I play it with my original sample. The actual key sounds pretty good and it's maybe wavering a little bit and it might be a little bit out of tune with the original sample. But we're gonna fix that in a moment. At the moment I'm just gonna copy and paste this sample and now I'm gonna transpose the section that I've copied and let's have a listen. So what I'm doing here is just quickly creating harmony parts using the manual transpose. And I'm basically playing around with it. So there's no rules, you'll just know when it sounds wrong. So I'm basically staggering these parts just to build the actual sort of vocal pad effect. I think I can go one more here, so I'm just gonna copy and paste it and add one final piece. Now let's have a listen. Okay, well those two last sections clash a little bit because they're so close together. So all I'm doing is just doing a quick edit of the actual audio events and hopefully now they shouldn't be overlapping too much. Okay, that's starting to sound pretty cool. So I'm highlighting all of these parts and now I can start to edit them together. And one of the things I can do is change the fine tuning on all of the parts or events that I have selected or if I wanted to be 
a perfectionist. I could go in and do it on each individual part. And that's what I would probably normally do if I'm time stretching audio by such a drastic amount. I can continue to change my project root key, but one thing I didn't do was specify a root key for these new vocal samples that I imported. And it didn't matter because the original key was working fine. Now, of course, I can transpose my project. But transposing, pitch shifting any audio over a large amount, like making it way higher or way lower, is not always going to sound great. And it's really going to depend on the algorithm that you use to stretch the pitch or time. Now, Cubase has an amazing pitch and time stretching algorithm. But if you use the standard one, you'll notice a difference in quality. And you'll also notice a difference in CPU performance. So it's really a matter of finding the one that works best for you. And of course, the one that you may have access to in your version of Cubase. For the majority of this video, I'm going to use the Elastic Pro Pitch because it's not drawing the most out of my computer processing and it's great quality. Now that I've decided on a key, and when I say decided, of course I can change that at any point in time, I can now go back over to my media bay and remembering that those buttons have to be activated down the bottom, I can now hear these samples in the key and the tempo of my project. So Cubase knows what key they're in and it automatically transposes them. But when I bring it over into the actual project itself, I still should go up and make sure that I specify this key so that it's transposed instantly and it's snapping right in again to the key of our project. I haven't changed all the colors of my tracks, but if you want to, of course, you can reorganize your track list and continue to add different colors for different types of events or instruments or samples in your music productions. You can just keep shopping over there in the media bay for samples. On this occasion, I've brought in a single hit and you can see that the key is already there and Cubase has actually detected that key and it's already specified that key up in the information section. So if it's one single hit, you don't really need to go and specify the key unless it's missing. This is a bass line, so it's got multiple notes in it. So again, I'm specifying the key. I can select those earlier vocal parts and quickly copy and paste them. If I want to, I can also go in and maybe move that initial fine pitch around because I notice it's not quite sitting right. And of course, like I said earlier, I'd get in and I'd change that. So we can start to build these blocks for our music production and doing it this way is so much fun, but it's also so easy just dragging and dropping samples out of the media bay and using the transpose and root key functionality. Now, right now, I've imported a drum sample over. Now, you've got to decide if you want a drum sample to be transposing in the middle of a song. Quite often you wouldn't, but in this case, I'm transposing one section to make it sound higher and the other section is going to sound deeper. So it's an important, I guess, point for consideration. Do you want the drums to sound as they were over in the media bay or do you want them to be impacted every time you change the global pitch? And don't forget, of course, they've been time stretched. And we can also change the algorithm on this one drum sample to match time rather than pitch. So there's lots of different options there for different types of instruments. Right now I'm just having a look through some of my vocal samples because I feel like this track could use a vocal hook, but quite often the problem with vocals are that they're moving around, they're a melody, so it's a little bit hard to just track down or even trap the pitch against our project. So sometimes it's about finding a song that you think might work in context and bringing it out and just messing around a little bit with that transpose function. So I'm dragging and dropping this over. And I'm just going to make sure it's not auto playing in the background. Now, as it plays with my project, it's a little bit out. So I'm going up to my transpose and I'm just moving this around until I find something that feels like it's quite comfortable. One thing I haven't done here is specify the root key for this sample, and I can see in the name that it's A, so I'm going to enter that into the root key. But because I changed the transpose first, now my audio's out, so you can get a little bit mixed up if you don't specify that root key first, especially if you're going to be changing 
the project root key. So I'll just use the transpose function to get that right. And now I'm taking these sections out of the vocals, which is the great thing about working with samples. You can just cut events and samples up. And of course, you can go back and you can change the algorithm. In this case, it's vocals, so we really want to focus on pitch. So we're using that elastic pitch setting. Now let's copy and paste these vocal lines over and continue to develop these musical building blocks for our music production. As we did with the original choir sample, we can copy and paste, and now I can get this second part here, and I can transpose it up 12 semitones. Remember, it was minus one before, so now that it's 11, I've created an octave part. And because it's really time-stretching it by a fair amount, I'm going to change over to elastic performant pitch and that's the highest quality so if you've got a computer that can handle it then of course you should use these settings um, once again you'll notice if something's going wrong so that octave part sounds quite good if you were to solo it well maybe it mightn't sound so great but it's all about what you can get away with when it's blended into the actual track itself now let's see if we can create maybe another harmony part just on one of these lines so I'm copying and pasting and you can see that I just copy and paste it down to a new track. And now I'm moving the transpose button around and have a listen. That sounds really cool. And hey, that was so easy to do. I've just brought a sample in from my media bay from one of my folders on my hard drive. I've instantly chopped it up. I've transposed it. Basically, I've got a cool vocal hook that goes over the top of the other samples that I've just brought in from the media bay. So this is a great way to be able to get different samples to fit together inside our music productions. And like I said earlier on, man, it's good fun. It's such good fun. Now I can just continue to go to my media bay and find different parts of different samples that are going to work or even complement my track. Now finally, I'm gonna show you one final piece of pure magic when it comes to transposing in Cubase. So we're going to look at the transpose track. If we go to this plus button here and go to the little drop down menu right here, you can see our transpose track. And you can only add one of these, of course, because it wouldn't make sense to have more than one transpose track transposing a whole entire project. So this is really easy to use. It's a matter of getting the pencil, can right mouse click for your toolbox and simply go to an area where it makes sense to have your project transpose or move pitch and just enter a number into this little zone here. Now some numbers that are good to enter are 2, 4, 5, 7. They're really strong modulations or they're really strong jumps, musical jumps that you can use inside a project. So it's up to you to find those jumps. But you'll also notice as you transpose the global project, the track will sound sweeter in some areas. So for me, it sounds sweeter in this middle section here that I've transposed. So it's a matter of taking your time, I guess experimenting, but also really enjoying this process and enjoying what you can achieve without playing one single musical note. Look, some people are going to have issues with that and take exception to it but in reality hey why not create music like this because we can and samples are so good and our tracks can instantly be sounding great and hey we're in charge of mixing it all up together thanks for taking the time to stop by and check this video out please subscribe to the cubase youtube channel for plenty more videos just like this i'm gonna see you there